Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Tom Colaser, who is where are you today, Tom? What part of the world? Uh, I'm in Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia. <sighs> Excellent. And do you have blue skies up there today? <laughs> Absolutely. It's our first day over 80 Fahrenheit, so it's it's always nice. Hate outside on the patio. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. And uh, Tom is the CEO and founder of Aweber Communications, which he founded back in 1998. And uh, they help small businesses work more effectively, communicate more effectively, build relationships with customers and prospects using permission-based email marketing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So as we were just talking about before we came on air, Tom, um, certainly, you know, my perception was that, uh, you know, because a lot of other marketing channels have been shut down, like event marketing and all that, that there has been a rush to email marketing, and maybe it's a little harder to, to stand out right now. But um, what, what's, your, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I'd say uh, back in March, uh, early March, when, when everything was kind of going crazy in, in the U.S. here, there was a lot of like COVID-related, like very specific, hey, what was going on kind of stuff. I'd say at least 50% of those emails shouldn't have ever been sent to begin with um, because like the people that were receiving them didn't care. <laughs> it wasn't relevant to them. Not that they didn't care, but that it just wasn't relevant to them. Um, and, you know, now I think we're seeing... Um, a lot more pivots in traditional offline businesses, figuring out how to do things online. Um, you know, all of your e-commerce related, you know, public companies, they're, they're way up because the results are, you know, they're starting to report uh, earnings and so forth and traffic levels and, you know, Zoom usage is off the charts and, sure. you know, various shopping cart services are off the charts. And we've seen a definite pickup in businesses coming in online that haven't been as, as well, you know, or haven't been in the past. Uh, so I think it's a big pivot in figuring out how you can continue to do and serve your customers in a world where you can't physically interact. So mm -hmm. and that's the world so we've what, been in for 20 years. Yeah. So, so what are some of the, um, for, I mean, this is a good refresher for people who do a lot of email marketing, but maybe also for people who are, who are doing more of it than they've ever. What are some of the fundamentals that you should be addressing and what are some of the pitfalls to avoid? I'd say the, the absolute most important one is permission. Don't send email to people that haven't asked for it. You know, uh, don't go scrape the web for email addresses. Don't sign people up to your lists if they haven't asked to specifically be on them. Um, you don't like getting spam yourself. <laughs> don't send it. <laughs> Everybody always tries to say that their business is different and the people that they're putting on their list want to get their emails, uh, even though they haven't asked for them. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> Your business isn't, that, isn't special in that way. You can't send spam. Don't do that. So that number one is, you know, make sure you have permission. Um, number two is make sure that the emails that you're sending, you know, add value, you know, at the end of the day, when you're sending an email, you're not sending an email to a hundred people or a thousand people or 10,000 or a hundred thousand people. You're sending it to one person and mm -hmm. it's the one person that's reading it on their computer at their desk or on their mobile phone or when they're out driving or, you know, we're in the passenger seat. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, when they're doing whatever it is that they're doing, it's that one person. So make sure that message speaks to them. Um, and, and that it's actionable in some way that they're getting some sort of value out of it. Because if every time you email somebody, all you're doing is saying, pay me, you're, you're not building a relationship. You're not providing value there. Um, and, and over time, those people will fall off. Your, they'll either unsubscribe or they'll just start deleting your emails. Um, or they might mark them as spam, you know, in Gmail or Yahoo or whatever email tool that they're using. Um, and over time, that affects your email reputation with mm -hmm. receivers like Gmail, that if too many of your subscribers don't want to get your emails and are showing signs that they don't want to get your emails with their engagement, you know, whether they're opening, clicking, et cetera, then eventually your emails might go to the spam folder. Even though those people originally requested your emails, they're saying with their intentions and their actions that they don't want to get them anymore. Um, and Gmail will act accordingly. So. Yeah, Those are probably the two biggest things. Absolutely. So it is absolutely like the, the fundamental, the, the pay attention to, to the fundamentals. And okay, and so as you've been doing this a long time, obviously, what are some of the ways that you can, that you advise people how they can stand out? I mean, obviously, you know, as you said, 
you know, providing something of value or whatever. But I mean, uh, when we're still getting a lot of different emails, how do we ensure, even if we've opted in, let's face it, we opt in to, to receive emails and then we just ignore them a lot of the times, even though we've opted into them. So how, how are some ways that you can stand out? I think initially it comes setting expectations for when somebody is subscribing. What are you going to deliver them? What is the value in signing up for your list? Um, and how frequently are you going to send it? Because there's nothing worse than thinking when you sign up, like, oh, they might send me once, one email a month, and then you get like three emails a day. Nobody's happy with that. Uh, so set proper expectations. And, you know, it doesn't need to be exact, but like, you know, within a margin of error. Um, so set proper expectations up front. You know, beyond that, it's it's thinking about what, you know, what is going to be relevant to your subscribers. So I was talking with a friend that runs a um, security and fire prevention company, and he was talking about that they don't really do much email marketing. Um, and uh, he's, he's off on friends list now. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you, know, the, uh, uh, you know, they were looking to try to communicate with their customer base more, and he was talking about, you know, different things that they could sell their users via email. And I'm like, that's great. But that's not what is most relevant to your users right now. Like right now you have commercial customers that have empty businesses, yeah. you know, where they might have, um, uh, you know, security concerns. Like they have a building that is normally occupied that now they have an alarm system that's activated uh, during times of the day when it wasn't previously. Do you have shades that go up and down automatically? They're going to set off the alarms. Do people have balloons or drapes or other things that are going to wave in the wind, you know, in the air conditioning vents that are going to set off alarms? Like, you know, those kind of valuable tips that are, you know, very topical to those users, but aren't directly saying like, pay me money for this in, in right now. It's right. like making yourself relevant to your customer, depending on what the situation is. And right now there's a lot of things that a lot of people can be doing that's relevant. It may not generate you revenue right this second, but it generates you loyalty in the long term as we recover out of out of our current issues. So I think it's 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 really the value equation that, that is what helps you set stuff apart. As well as like your brand and making it identifiable as you. A lot of people's emails like all look the same. And when you don't recognize them or it comes from like Jim at the security company and it's like, wait, who's Jim? Like, you know, I, I, rec I, you know, I recognize, you know, fire protection services. I don't, I don't recognize Jim. So make sure your front address shows up as the thing that people are going to identify with. Like, it's really simple. It's not the complicated stuff. I think a lot of people build it up to be something bigger than it actually is. It's the really simple stuff that I think makes the most difference that a lot of people just overlook. Yeah. And how, and how often, um, one of the things I think people overlook too is cleaning their, cleaning out their lists on, on a regular basis as well, because I mean, it's nice. Yeah. I mean, it's nice if you have um, X amount of thousands of contacts in your email marketing system, but if, if the majority of people never actually open or reference everything, I mean, what is the kind of the point in the end? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that goes back to the engagement that we were talking. So for context, like when most email marketing providers like AWeber, we build based on the number of subscribers that somebody has. So it's in our best interest to help our customers build their subscriber base. But I actively talk about removing people from your list and taking them out of your accounts because they're no longer engaged, which like lowers your bill. So just for context is like, I wouldn't do that if it wasn't in your best interest to make sure that you have the best deliverability overall. And it really comes down to looking at people that, you know, somebody hasn't opened or clicked the message from you in the last six to 12 months, they're gone. They're, they're, they might still be on your list. They might still get your email, but it might be going to the spam folder or it might be getting filed somewhere. They set up a filter long ago and they've long since forgotten and are no longer relevant to you. And over time, as the percentage of your list becomes more and more unengaged, you know, the fo folks like Gmail say, oh, 80% of their subscribers don't interact with their emails. Right. What's going on with that? You know, um, and they might put the rest of your emails in the spam folder, and that's not a good. That's not a good thing. So you want to make sure that the, the the highest percentage of your subscribers are engaged and actively clicking and opening your emails to keep the best deliverability overall. So yeah, yeah, and like I said, I mean, I think that's that's difficult sometimes for people to. It's counterintuitive because people love to have like they always think like, oh, my list is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you're going, yeah, but the engagement's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's kind of like, it's not really helping. You. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, um, I, I never, I don't care how big somebody's list is. I always want to know what their open rate is and their click through yeah. rate because that tells that tells you how how like actually big their subscriber base is. Yeah, and what are some of, what are some of uh, other pieces of advice that you would give to people around email right now, especially if if the as you said, I mean, one of the things the temptation is if you were doing a lot of other marketing things and now you can't do those your temptation is to send more email, right? <laughs> to make up for it. Yeah. As we said, that's not, that's not the answer either. Um, what are some other piece of advice would you give to people? I think there's, there's a lot of new things. Like, you know, you hear things like marketing automation these days. There's a lot of uh, things that you can do in a tool like Aweber that allow you to automate uh, email campaigns that are more relevant to users. So rather than thinking about like, I have a thousand subscribers that are on my list, Think about it as I have 10 different groups of 100 subscribers that are engaging with my business in different ways. You know, so like I, I like to use the uh, example of like an adopt, like a, a pet adoption agency, mm -hmm. um, you know, where you, you might have, you know, dogs and cats and like bunnies all in the same facility. Like people subscribe to get updates when, you know, new animals come in and, and they, you know, they get the cute emails with the, you know, the pictures and all those sort of things. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, you might be clicking and engaging with and learning more about all the dogs all the time. But like when I get the emails, I only click on the emails with the pictures for the cats. And what you can do with marketing automation is I can then tag based on like me looking at the cat pictures and you looking at the dog pictures, I can tag me as cats and you as dogs. And then what I can do in the future is I can conditionally show you only dog pictures and me only cat pictures. Even though I'm sending one email, I can send basically two different emails depending on who the, the you know, subscriber is. I just basically, I say only show these pictures to the cat subscribers and only show these pictures to the dog subscribers. And well, it's kind of a funny example, but like, I think it's something that most people can, uh, can grasp, but like, you know, whether you're a uh, driving range or like whatever car dealership, like people are interested in different kinds of trucks versus cars versus, you know, like every business has these different kind of categories, like yoga studios, like there's different kinds of yoga, like mm -hmm. one customer might be interested in one kind and one customer might be interested in another. So you can segment and send them things that are most topical without having to do a lot of extra work on your, on, on your part. It's just really simple little, little things that you can do to make those messages more relevant and more engaging for, for subscribers. Yeah, um, and, I think that, and I think that's a great, uh, a great piece of advice just to underline there is to, not, is to just avoid, the, avoid this, you know, the one size fits all spray and pray because yeah, it's tempting because it's quick and it's easy to do. Yeah. Um, but as you say, segmenting takes a little bit more work, but it's far more effective. Not much, not much. And the ROI of that is, is so much higher. So you ultimately, you send, you send fewer emails, but you send much more engaging and relevant emails to your subscribers. And that's, and that's really the thing that helps them avoid that like kind of inbox overload. So more is not better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but we live, we live in a culture that keeps promoting more is more when reality is it's the opposite. Um, yeah. But listen, uh, Tom, this has been um, uh, this has been fascinating. Thank you for joining us today. Before we go, all of Tom's information will be in his contributor bio. But please do tell us a little bit more about yourself and Aweber. Sure. Uh, I, I started the company, so Aweber, uh, Aweber.com. Uh, we serve. We've been around since 1998. And we serve about 100,000 small business customers around the world doing both online, you know, creators, YouTubers, bloggers, et cetera, as well as like traditional brick and mortar and so forth. And we help with their marketing automation around the email. Uh, so it's been, uh, it's been a fun ride. So Excellent. Well, listen, thanks again, Tom. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.